Okay, are we ready to actually build a polypeptide now? Let's see. We've built an MRA molecule, which has copied the amino acid sequencing instructions from a piece of DNA called a gene on a chromosome located in the nucleus. mRNA has now carried those sequencing instructions out into the cytoplasm. Now transfer or tRNA has also been synth synthesized that will use those instructions from mRNA as well as bringing in the appropriate amino acids for that protein to the ribosome. Ribosomal RNA has now also been synthesized that combines the instructions and the amino acids into one molecule that will ultimately be responsible for binding those amino acids together in the correct order. First, let's explain how the tRNA molecule is actually built. Write in your notes that a specific enzyme called the amino acyl tRNA synthesize, synthesize, synthase, right here. Amino acyl tRNA synthase. Now this is responsible for joining each amino acid to the correct tRNA according to the sequencing information contained on the mRNA template strand. Now there are four steps to this binding process to get in your notes. Now you see them in red numbers here. One, two, three, four. First, the active site binds the amino acid in ATP. That's right here. The active site binds the amino acid in ATP. When we do our enzyme section, you're going to understand a little bit more about what active site is. But for now, it just the enzyme then is where the enzyme uh, binds is called the active site. And there's also ATP. Remember what ATP is? ATP is an energy storage molecule. Now, it's the energy storage molecule that's going to be required to bind these two together. That's why it's necessary. In step two, ATP loses two of its three phosphates. Remember, it's adenosine triphosphate. Loses two of its P groups. So if it loses two, the tri becomes mono. All right. So AMP, adenosine monophosphate, which joins to the amino acid. And then in step three, tRNA bonds to the actual amino acid, displacing the AMP. And finally, in step four, the activated amino acid is released by the enzyme. So that's building a molecule of tRNA. So that's how a tRNA is built. Okay, now that we know how the tRNAs bind with each amino acid, we can proceed with linking them together. Let's now get these steps in your notes. The AUG start codon is recognized by methionyl tRNA or MET. So you see it here in the picture. Write in your notes that the ribosome now contains fully assembled RRNA molecules that will sit, and here you see mRNA, will sit on the mRNA strand in order to transcribe the information and sequencing for building that protein. Now remember the diagram of the ribosome you drew and labeled in your notes earlier? Well, you're going to need it now. Write in your notes that once the start codon has been identified, a tRNA fits into the binding site when it's anti-coding base pairs with an mRNA codon. It's right here. You see the mRNA binding site? That happens right in here. The P site holds the tRNA attached to the growing polypeptide. Here's your P site. All right, your P site holds the tRNA attached to the growing polypeptide. The A site, here's the A site, right here, A, here's P. 
the A site holds the tRNA carrying the next amino acid. So we're going this way from right to left. All right, and you're going to see an animation of it here pretty soon. So the A site holds the TNA carrying the next amino acid. So it's, it's going to go, so here's the amino acid right here. It's going to get coded and move down this way. Then the next TNRA, tRNA is going to come in here with the next um, codon for the next amino acid. Then eventually they'll get hooked together and it will move this way and so forth until we have all of the amino acids bonded together that can form a protein. Now, the exit site will be where now that amino acid that's bonded to the next amino acid exits the ribosome. Now then in step three, translation would end when a stop codon, UAA, UAG, or UGA is reached. You may also be asked to list the steps in the translation process on the test and what happens in each step. So let's get them in your notes. Now it may seem repetitive, but it's necessary and a good review. Write that the initiation stage of translation brings together mRNA and tRNA, which carries the first amino acid of the polypeptide. So that's what you see here. So here's the first amino acid in that polypeptide. This is the start codon. So this would be AUG. You see that could be one of the three codes. So this is where it starts. This is how uh, RNA knows when to start reading and start making the proteins. Now a small ribosomal subunit, that, that appears first right here. You see, you remember that from the diagram. The small ribosomal subunit binds to the molecule of mRNA. So here's our small ribosomal subunit. Here's the messenger RNA. That has to happen first. Now write that the mRNA binding site on this subunit recognize a specific nucleotide sequence on the mRNA. So now we're going to have this one now come in next. It's going to recognize this next triplet sequence just upstream of the start codon. So upstream, remember now, upstream means um, upstream of where the start codon is. So in this situation, we're going this way. So the next amino acid would now sit right in here, and this code is upstream of the start codon. Then an initiator tRNA with the anticodon UAC base pairs with the start codon AUG, which you see right here. This tRNA carries the amino acid methionine. So that's why you see the MET here. Next, the arrival of a large ribosomal subunit. There you go. Here's the large one completes the initiation complex. Proteins called initiation factors, which aren't shown here, are required to bring all the translation components together. And GTP provides the energy for the assembly. We'll talk about the difference between GTP and ATP later on in this class. The initiator tRNA is in the P site. So there's your P site right there. And the A site is available to the tRNA bearing the next amino acid. So remember, we're going this way. Here's our start codon, MET. Here's the AUG UAC complex. So we're going to move this way. So another, the next sequence triplet amino acid would sit on the A and it would then move this way to the left okay then the next one would come in next to it bind with this one A and move and exit and then the next one would come in and then the next one and then the next one so okay now in this virtual simulation we're going to take a look at this whole process uh, little segments at a time and then we'll rewind it 
and then we'll look at it all together so you can see the continuous process of protein synthesis. So in prokaryotic cells, remember that translation is initiated by the formation of an initiation complex. Now in this thing, in this uh, animation, they're referring to a 30S ribosomal unit. So let's look at that. Translation is initiated by form. So here comes now a 30S ribosomal unit. Now, if you remember your diagram, that 30S unit right here is um, the small subunit. So that small subunit now has to connect and bond with this mRNA strand. Okay? Now, we know that um, that happens now because of this methyl tRNA right here. Okay, and we know this is tRNA because we see the little three loops. And we now know that this AUG is a start code. So here's the start code on mRNA, and here's the corresponding now, or anticodon of that in tRNA that will now bind. Now remember why that happens. Um, the enzyme needs to know where to start copying. So that start code is really important. So it hooks on now right here. Now here comes what they call the 50S ribosomal unit. The 50S ribosomal unit would be the large subunit. All right, and you're going to see this large subunit, subunit commit and connect now to make the entire ribosome. Okay, so it comes in here, the 50S ribosomal unit, then joins the complex. So we're going to see it join the complex right there. And then proteins called initiation factors, write that in your notes, are involved but not shown. So initiation factors now would be factors that say, all right, this connection now has been made. Let's get started now with the sequence, copying the sequence. So we now have the full ribosome. All right, we've got the connection with the start code. Now we're ready to start copying that uh, information that mRNA has for the ribosomal RNA, all right, or this ribosome unit to start putting together amino acids. Okay, now this entire thing they're going to call the 70S subunit. So when they're connected, write in your notes that when they're connected now, this is called the 70S subunit. So let's take a look at that. So we're getting ready now, and now, now they call it now the 70S has has is they call it the 70S ribosome. Now the 70S ribosome has two sites to which tRNA or transfer RNA carrying amino acids can bind. Now go back to your diagram. And you'll see now that this diagram fits. There's your E site, there's your P site, and there's your A site. So now get familiar now with what this looks like, as now we're going to put some words to the actions. Okay? Now, so there's two sites. One, the P site, peptidyl, P-E-P-T-I-D-Y-L, and the other's called the acceptor, or A site. So let's set that up now. So here we are. Here's our P site now. Notice that the start codon enters in the P site. Write that down. So your start codon is the first thing to enter the P site. So get that in your notes. Now the A site now will be ready for the first real amino acid present in that protein. Because remember, this UAC is just a start code. So eventually now what's going to happen, we're going to remember, we're copying it right to left. We're going in this direction right here, right to left. So eventually you're going to see this MET move over here to the E site, the exit site. This amino acid now will move up here and be ready to bind with the next amino acid in this process. So let's see how that works. So here's our A site now. 
So the A site, so we've got our E site ready for the first exit and our A site ready for the next um, triplet amino acid. Here it comes. It's proline. You can see the PRO right here. Here's our anticodon now. All right, so anticodon now is the tRNA complement to the mRNA codon, anticodon. So here's our anticodon. So you should be ready now to be able to um, recognize the mRNA sequence and give the complement now triplet code for the tRNA sequence. So CCG would be GGC in um, tRNA language. Note, no, no T's in here because we're talking about um, RNA, not DNA. So now what we have is we have this site ready now to start making the amino acid sequence. So now what you're going to see is this tRNA is going to move off here because it's going to go grab another um, amino acid sequence. You're going to see this amino acid move up here and bind with this next one. So this tRNA is going to move into the P site. They're going to bind. And then that A site is going to be uh, ready for the next amino acid. Let's see how that works. So here's now our first amino acid, methionine. Now watch this transfer RNA right here. This transfer RNA is going to move. This ribosome unit now is moving in this direction, but is copying in that direction. So now there goes that tRNA. These two are now bound, and here comes the next piece of RNA. So now we've got the codon for tyrosine, which is our next amino acid. So now in the P site, we've got these two amino acids now bound together. So what will happen with this tRNA? It's going to move here to the exit site and exit. These, this tyrosine will bond with proline and move into this site. And then the next amino acid will move in here. Here's our anticodon. And here's our mRNA codon. So let's let this play. So look at what happens now. So now the ribosome is just moving down the line and copying the codes for each amino acid in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. So there we go. Tyrosine's now bound to proline, peptide bond. All right, there goes now the amino acid or the uh, tRNA. Here comes the new one. And you'll see this whole process happen right here. Here's now the building of, pro of a protein. Now, now we encounter the stop codon. So this now is how we, uh, the molecule knows, how the ribosome, the rRNA knows to stop copying or to stop binding now these amino acids together. All right, so what, in effect, what happens is Remember the DNA are the instructions. In the DNA instructions, it says, all right, this protein right here is complete. So stop copying. All right, so that's why this stop codon is necessary. And you see the stop codon is UAA. That's a universal stop codon. So now we have, can you remember what structure this would be? This straight lined group of amino acids would be the protein's primary structure. So now we've got the primary structure of this protein. We've stopped recording or we stopped uh, copying and we're ready to move on to the next protein. So now we call this process elongation. So you can see now it's elongation because we've got this long chain now of amino acids. And that Elongation is terminated when this stop codon happens. Now, the stop codon does not specify an amino acid. It does not have a corresponding transfer RNA. It's just boom, stop. Okay, done. We're done actually doing that. So here's now a, a good virtual way for you to look at what happens now in the ribosome. So this entire thing is our ribosome. 
All right, it's got rRNA, tRNA, and mRNA. It's directing now all of that information. And now the result is this protein that's being built. Okay, let's have a copy of your notes. Take a picture, uh, submit it to Moodle, pick up that study guide, and I'll see you in the next section. Bye.